Welcome back to the late day wrap up of which we will be following up on this morning's short term time from analysis and then of course covering a lot of the major indices within this world start off with good old Dixie. So with that said, uh, well, I would like to wish you the best best and let's get into it right here right now. So we do see that Dixie did pop up all the way to the 21 exponential moving average to the upside. However, we are seeing a bit of a short term uh, time frame rejection there. And I do believe that yesterday we did see a move uh, past the $91 region was rather likely. However, still not actually breaking out of the overall region, the region still very much stands as it has been for about the last Last three months on the higher term time frames like the weekly and above and that would be the range between about 91 bucks to the upside versus 89 and three quarters to the downside so with that said seeing as we are getting a little bit of a uh, daily rejection right here i would look for this one to trade back down a bit and probably give a little bit of relief pressure for a lot of uh well all the major assets that trade versus uh, the dollar of course so with that said i am still looking at this as a long-term basing region of course but for the short term and maybe even medium term i would be looking for a little bit of downside so where the downside targets on this one be very likely back down to about 80 uh, sorry 90 uh 90 90 80 ish region to 90 85 somewhere back down around here and i would be looking for a bounce there and then do we get con further continuation to the downside after that perhaps yes i mean this is technically a lower high right now and the daily does look like a massive shooting star dildo right there so i probably would be looking for a little bit of more prolonged downside but again this is not playing to any of the higher term time frame narratives as the higher term time frames are more or less well they're more or less set right now and the uh and the areas of action are very clear and well delineated between again 91 bucks and 89 and three quarters to the downside any sort of a move outside of that range that's when we really are going to see very uh, well, it's very likely when we're going to see an actual uh, it, uh, interplay between well Dixie the dollar and all the major US assets as long as kind of range between there it's not going to be all that much you know yes there's going to be a slight ebb and flow here can kind of help up with short term time frame biases but on the whole I wouldn't really necessarily be expecting anything major or massive until we actually see a breakout outside of that range so with that said um, I'm curious what our momentum oscillators are looking like here yeah I'm still looking like uh, still looking like the weekly actually does put in a major low here even though I am looking for short term medium term downside and so this is very consistent with the last few major uh, macro lows, or at least all the macro lows that we can find on this chart going back the last uh, 30 years, actually. And, um, and and typically on the macro lows, we do see about a little bit over three months long of prolonged period of, of time kind of hanging on the, onto the lows of which we've kind of just entered into month number three right here. So you can look at those ones yourself. We can, we can go all the way back to 2018. We can go all the way back to 2011. 2008, uh, <laughs> that one sounds very familiar. Uh, 95 and then 90 are the ones that really stick out to me. And, uh, and and we and we're seeing very similar behavior here as well. Should probably also check out the monthly as we actually haven't done that since we got uh, the new month of March. But what does it look like right now? It's looking like yes, it is putting in a bit of a bit of a low here. And I do think you know if I did have put my personal opinion on it, I do think over the next couple months we do see this one rally up uh, somewhere around about 92 and a half. That's where the next big test does need come. Uh, also fulfilling the mesh move off of this accumulation formation down here. After that, I'd want to see it in real time because technically speaking, we'd still be looking at a downtrend, obviously on the macro. But could it ha could it extend that more and actually put in a real market reversal? Perhaps yes. So I would keep that option uh, open, but uh, but still for now, probably going to take its time. I do think that we're getting extremely close. Probably within these next two to three weeks, uh, I would be looking for a breakout out of here. And again, that will very likely put a lot of pressure um, on anything that trades versus the dollar, of course. Anyways, uh, moving on into traditional markets, let's go and reference Mr. or Miss is Nasdaq who, who, who knows <laughs> who knows at this point um, and what do we see so we did see a little bit of a range coming in from this morning's video and uh, similar to Bitcoin you know Bitcoin consulting right below that last uh, lower term time frame lower high same thing with Nasdaq here too now they're both kind of fighting it off and I do and I am starting to look at this as a little bit more likely to try some upside but the conditions for upside on Nasdaq it's very very similar to Bitcoin as well is basically based off of this last lower high uh, again at about it would be about 51,000 bucks for Bitcoin which which is akin to about 13,350 for NASDAQ here. So that also does imply that as long as we're below there, yes, pressure is still down. Yes, we are still looking at lower highs. Yes, we do have potential divergence uh, plays in order of uh, this one. I, I would say that this drive already played out from about 13,320 uh, all the way down to 13,150. Um, yeah, I, or even all the way down to, yeah, about 13,150. Um, and we do see that four hour Stokes are getting pretty, pretty, the uh, you know, pretty the fuck up there too. So it wouldn't take too much twisties back down, but I would be on guard here. Because if it actually does take out this last prior high or just even close above the 200 simple or even just wicks above this area right here, 13,350 once again, I would be looking for it to actually run a bit uh, towards 13,500 ish region, a little bit north of 13,500 ish region. But until that happens, I do look at this as more or less uh, healthy of a consolidation, but still likely to give another try to the downside here. Uh, looking at the weekly, um, you know, it, you know, it actually is holding itself up rather nicely. Uh, but this 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 chart is a stark contrast to what we see on SPY futures and also uh, Dow Jones Industrial. 
of which spy futures are still pretty damn strong right now we are getting a bit of a backfill on last week's open but uh you know usually see a little bit of downside pressure on that but looking at the daily i'm, I'm not really i'm not bearish on this uh this one looks like it wants to probably retest the prior highs at least right around uh, 39 35 region and then we'll come back to, to it uh, maybe the next couple of days uh, and this one looks a lot more healthy on the lower term time frames as well yes technically speaking you are still working on lower highs uh, here too but this one very much uh putting in a higher low as it stands right now and that'll be confirmed with any sort of a closure above 3900 and that that would generate targets back up north of yeah 3935 region and after that i mean you just got to be looking at a retest of the highs and very likely new all-time highs um you know anywhere past this region right here new all-time highs extremely likely so uh you know does that does that bleed into bitcoin very very likely so it's very difficult for me to be looking for a uh, short-term downside if this one actually does pull through here similar to what we see on nasdaq and similar to what we would see on uh, dow jones which actually just opened so let's go check out uh, check it out right here yeah, very, very similar chart. This one actually a little, a little bit better even than now uh, than SPY. I do think, um, actually, actually pretty damn good right now. Let's go down to the very low term time frames. Uh, actually, looking a little more toppy on the short term time frames. We do have hit and bearish average between this point and this point. Actually, this one, does, this this one's actually quite funny. Short term time frames actually do look a lot more downside imposed. Higher term time frames very obviously bullish here. So what does that mean? Well, probably does play a little bit of short term downside if I did call it. We do see all momentum monsters uh, kind of shifting way the fuck up there right now. Here's your buy. Here's your hourly. Here's your buy. Well, actually, buy early is. So looking good. Uh, triple hourly is looking pretty good. Four hour is looking pretty damn good and playing off this long term trend line going all the way back to October. Kind of hard to hate, actually. Um, so you know what? Uh, Dow Jones, is that is this one the key indicator of this market right now? Could be, especially if Bitcoin pulls through here. I'd actually be putting the focus on Dow Jones for a little bit of time as uh, we do see it lead. Anyways, um, speaking of the, well, actually, before we get into Bitcoin, let's go check out uh, Goldie. Where's where's my Goldie locks? Where are you, sir? I actually had a, actually had a uh, dog when I was a kid named Goldie. <laughs> it's really, and by the way, it was a golden retriever too. <laughs> so it's like a very, uh, you know, creative name. Anyways, um, have we hit our $1,700 target to the downside yet? uh pretty damn close 1707 i'd say that that's i'd say that that's close enough in this case um so i would be looking for a relief rally here uh, on the short term time frames but the well I, I think actually we just had that that was your 17 that was your 1707 all the way up to 1735 tick that all happened in the last 24 hours jesus christ man all right Mark, mark's moving fast uh do we have divergence that plays right here yes indeed we do this is going to very likely be confirmed as a local high technically not just yet but will be below 1725 and then we would have hidden bearish divergence that would drive another move down to about 17 uh 10 ish region and then that would start to make this one look like a bearish redistribution pattern something like this in a in the form of a descending triangle and that can drive targets a little bit lower not too much lower I think that this one's very close to like a greater bounce here, but uh, I'd imagine it's probably gonna be like 1680 to 1690-ish region, um, of which that would line up with our weekly pivots, I believe. Yes, indeed it does. That's right in line with the Cyan 89 expansion we average right here, and also your June lows of 2020. So I'd be looking for bigger bounces off there. So yes, you know, while I do think it has probably a little bit lower to go, I do think that this one is in more bouncy bounce territory uh, relatively soon. Same thing on the monthly here too, bouncing off the 21 expansion average. So yes, I'd, I'd essentially say that this you know our kind of like long-term target from the last month and a half has been hit now i'd probably be looking for bounces after one short-term downside move uh once again uh, to right, you know, maybe just right below 1700 ish region. Anyways, uh, moving on to Bitcoin. This is what is actually becoming really, really interesting to me right now. So when we looked at the when, when we looked at this on this morning's video, we were actually noticing that uh, four hour and below were printing uh, hidden divergences. Well, obviously hidden bearish divergences in this case. Now, this one actually was confirmed right here. That was uh, coming in from yesterday, but I would say that that one's already played out. We did see a move from about 50,000 bucks to, what is this, uh, 48,000 bucks right there. For, uh, sorry, 48,400-ish region. Technically speaking, you probably would be looking for more on that. However, this one is starting to turn the corner, similar to what we see on uh, SPY futures and uh, in Dow Jones futures. So I am a little bit more defensive against this one right now, but it's kind of the same sort of idea here in the sense that if you are playing the trend right now, even from the shorter term timeframes, and ignore this trend line, because that is, uh, that, that is that is not relevant to what we're talking about. Um, but we'd be looking at this prior high right here at about 51,000 bucks, meaning that as long as Bitcoin's below, we obviously still are look, working on lower highs and there are divergence plays uh, it, you know, in motion. So that means that any sort of a local high that gets confirmed, well, very likely does trade back down and make a stab towards you know, 45, uh, you know, somewhere around 45,000 um, bucks. Probably bounce implied there too. 
And of course, when we look at the monthly as well, there are several things that do make me uh, not necessarily uh, say that a move lower has to happen to like 40,000 or 39,000 bucks, but just that if it did happen, that would be a very, very obvious opportunity and uh, look pretty damn good to me. So I, I am still, uh, e you know, even with this last little uh, like $500 rally right here since we last spoke, I am still a little bit more on the defensive side here. Um, uh, above 51,000 bucks, things look obviously a little bit better and I would be looking for a move somewhere around 54 to 55,000 bucks right here. That's kind of like the backstop for the higher term time frame meaning that I'm not really looking for Bitcoin to enter back into a uh, new trending motion, you know, retesting the prior time high at about 58,000 bucks and likely making new all time highs at the next targeted region about 62,000 uh, bucks until this area is met either on a four hour closure above 55,000 bucks or a daily closure above 54,000 bucks, whichever one happens first, although higher term time frames typically going to be better in this regard. Uh, but I also should remind myself that all lower term time frame momentum monsters are pointed south right now. Four hour stokes haven't across to the downside or technically not confirmed, but very likely to confirm on the next tick here. Uh, three hour, same thing bi hourly already coming down although they look like they want to get picked up and hourly actually getting picked up off, off of uh, off of this trend line right here so it is a little bit uh you know in the, in these cases i actually struggle a lot in these cases um because in the lower term time frame, you can you can very obviously see that we are seeing reaccumulation right here. In fact, we did identify the hidden bullish divergence from this morning's video right here. That did drive targets back up, I'd say, to about 49,500 ish region. What happens now is kind of like the twilight zone, at least for myself. So I typically uh, do not play these moves because in the midst of this um, of this structure, it really needs to kind of like take out one of these lows on the lower term time frames or the last prior high on like the well on basically like the four hour, which again is that. 50 51,000 uh, number right here. So until we do something like that, I don't really see anything super actionable in the short term time frames. I mean, obviously this trade is going, or you know, whichever way it breaks, it's going to be about a $3,000, uh, three, three to $4,000 plus or minus trade. Uh, so it's very much tradable. So I'd probably just wait for wait on this one right here, but you can see both sides right now. And this is, you know, and, and, and this is where all the fucking uh, trader haters go like, oh, so you're saying it can go both ways. Yeah, of course it can always go both ways. I mean, it's a game of fucking probabilities, but have your actionable points ready so that you know when to take action, because that's when, you know, some things a lot more in your favor. So in this case, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a breakout trader myself, but in this case, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty damn obvious. 51,000 bucks the upside, or yeah, if you want to be super exact, like 58, 65, if you want to be super exact, into the downside about uh, 48, 400-ish region, about 48, 400, of which Bitcoin just barely closed above it on the last four-hour dildo right there. Um, so with all of that said, I do want to reference once again the daily, or actually do want to reference the daily. The daily actually does have hidden bullish divergence. That, eh, I, I I usually don't like these plays like this, to be honest with you. The reason why is they typically happen in one in one dildo and then uh, and then fall back in a range. That's kind of what I'm looking at right here. If I still had to call it, I do think that Bitcoin essentially trades sideways and down a little bit. Long term, obviously very bullish, uh, as we spoke about in this morning's video. We can reference this chart right here. Um, of which I'll just throw in the trolling bands. And uh, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I we've never seen Bitcoin on a monthly after it's been trending above the top side trolling band, not test the top side trolling band. Now that can happen two ways. It either just gets so fucking bullish that uh, it pulls up the top side trolling band so that it so that it meets up our with our current price action about, or sorry, our low of about uh, 45,000 bucks. Okay, that's that's possible, I guess. Um, but if you do look at this, you know, throughout the annals of history here, uh, I, I do think that it kind of speaks for itself. There's literally never been a time on both the monthly and, you know, to a lesser extent, the bi-monthly, because there's not as much history, obviously, um, where it hasn't come back down and retested the top side trolling band after trending above and closing above. So in this case, I, I do think still a little more likely where that area be coming in around low forty thousand to upper thirty nine thousand dollars region. So I do think that that is, you know, still a bit of a threatening move right there, and that's really where I would like to see the opportunity, at least for myself. Of course, this is not French advice not French fries, but I'm happy to share kind of what I'm thinking of what I'll uh, theoretically be doing at those levels, so to speak. So again, uh, you can kind of see how, you know, you, you can kind of see how these things are all kind of interrelated to each other on the lower term timeframes. And it is really going to be based a lot off of this short term con uh, consolidation that we're looking at right here. So it's one of those like famed uh, times where you do see that the short term timeframe is actually taking on a greater meaning as uh, more or less, I, I personally speaking, I would like to see Bitcoin just go more sideways here, but, uh, but Bitcoin doesn't have to do what I wanted to do. And that's why we do have uh, trade plans for both ways. And of course, you didn't, I mean, it's always an trade anyways so it doesn't mean that you like you have to you don't you don't have to take it if you don't fucking like it anyways um so with all that said i am going to be signing off now i want to wish you well we'll be back tomorrow with some more uh, live stream analysis take care and until next time